hand the floor to Dr. Tedros for his opening remarks. Dr. Tedros, you have the floor. Because of air pollution, the simple act of breathing contributes to 7 million deaths a year. Almost everyone around the world is exposed to unhealthy levels of air pollution. Inhaling dirty air increases the risk of respiratory diseases like pneumonia, asthma, and chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, and increases the risk of severe COVID-19. It's also a major cause of other non-communicable diseases like ischemic heart disease, stroke, and cancers. Air pollution is a health threat in all countries, but especially for vulnerable groups in low- and middle-income countries with poor air quality due to urbanization and rapid economic development and air pollution in the home caused by cooking, heating, and lighting. Historical event, the launch of our WHO Global Air Quality Guideline. Today, we're proud to launch the updated WHO Global Air Quality Guidelines which provide clear evidence of the damage air pollution inflicts on human health. Since the last update in 2005, a substantial new body of evidence has accumulated, further demonstrating the degree to which air pollution affects all parts of the body, from the brain to a growing baby in a mother's womb at even lower concentrations than previously observed. That's why these new guidelines include low recommended levels for pollutants, including particulate matter, nitrogen dioxide, sulfur dioxide, and ozone. These new guidelines will have major implications for public health. They provide a practical tool for improving air quality around the world and a robust evidence base for developing national and local air quality standards. Dr. Hans Kluger, the WHO Regional Director for Europe. The last time WHO published air quality guidelines was in 2006. In the 15 years since, there has been a substantial increase in evidence of how and to what degree air pollution affects different aspects of human health. For that reason, and after a thorough systematic review of this accumulated evidence, almost all the updated guidelines levels are now lower than they were 15 years ago. We know that for many countries, this places the bar even higher than before. However, these guidelines also provide interim targets to support a stepwise progress towards their achievement, and thus a gradual yet measurable public health benefit. The guideline development group responsible for reviewing the evidence and developing this new... The next step is now for policymakers around the world to use these guidelines to develop evidence-informed policies to decrease the unacceptable health burden that results from air pollution exposure. What sort of action should leaders be taking at COP26? Dolichos preparing a very big report to be presented at the COP26 to strengthen the importance of having more action on mitigating the causes of climate change because those mitigation of the interventions will have enormous health benefits. And most of the health benefits of mitigating the causes of climate change will come in the sense that they will reduce the levels, of, the levels of air pollution, and by doing so, you can imagine the, the, the incredible number of lives we will save. Thank you very much, Dr. Nera. I'm just checking with Euro if they wish to come in. If we want to re reduce the levels of air pollution globally, one of the key questions is related to the energy sector. So we need to, as the call by launching today this updated air quality guideline is very much about accelerating this 
healthy energy transition that is very much needed, moving to renewable and clean sources of energy, because this will have an, a very positive impact on reducing the greenhouse gases emissions and therefore re tackling the causes of climate change and reducing air pollution. And both are critical pillars of our health.